In the past couple of weeks, I've been putting together two papers that I'm going to be presenting at two different conferences later this week. Talk about a busy time of year. Anyway, as I was doing that, I was looking at the other papers that I was using as research and also writing my own paper. And in doing so, I realized the main reason why Tesla's full self-driving and autonomous driving in general have been so delayed and are always falling behind when people predict they're going to happen. It's really one main reason, but it's a really, really big reason. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yes, indeed, this week I will be presenting two papers in international conferences, one in Stuttgart, Germany, the other in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. They're within 24 hours of each other. So amazingly enough, I can do both of them very easily because very sadly, I'm going to be doing them right here in my basement. Because yes, these conferences are still virtual for the most part. So that makes me kind of cry because I would like to be able to go and travel again to these international conferences, but such is life. Maybe next year, right? Anyway, while working on these papers, I was looking at the results that people keep posting and they are amazing results. Like we'll see language models and vision models and other kinds of models. And people will say, look at the incredible results we have. You know, they bold face them. They're always like, this is the best results in the category. And they're like, hey, I've got 80% or 90% or 95% accuracy. And you're like, holy crap, this is just amazing that these things are doing this well. And here, just to throw you a very specific example, this is not something I'm working on for my particular paper, but Andre Carpathy noted this. This is a very, very cool paper. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to look at it. It's about ultra large models and which ones are better and how many parameters you need, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, for the purposes of this discussion, let's look at this particular table. You see that chinchilla here for different types of benchmarks does like 80%, 75%, 51%, 84%. Notice that those are bold faces, which means that it's the best in these generalized language models. And then of course you can see that supervised state of the art, which is, which is they're, they're not just doing generalized language models, but one specifically designed for each of these benchmarks. And they're getting over 90%, right? 94%, 90%, 91%, 83%, 91%. So these are really, really excellent results. And you're like, wow, that's pretty fantastic. Look how great they're doing. You get to put their bold face in the table. You get to say, look how fantastic our results are, or look at comparatively how all of these things work together. So what's the problem here? The problem is that these results are absolutely terrible for full self-driving. And you may say like, okay, well, these are academic research papers. They're just looking at state of the art and everything like that. You know, in reality, commercial products are much better, but let's take a look at something that's fairly available to most people, maybe like Siri or Alexa or something along those lines, or Hey Google or whatever you want to talk about. But let's talk about language recognition models. So you talk to your phone or you talk to your Alexa device. Hopefully it won't respond. <laughs> you never know when it's going to actually respond. But anyway, you talk to these devices and you say, hey, put peanut butter and jelly on my shopping list or something, right? You give it a command. And most of the time, let's say 80, 85% now, it's really very good. But sometimes it makes a mistake and it says something like, play the peanut butter and jelly song from Family Guy. Do the peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly. And you laugh at it and you're like, oh, silly Alexa, you should have done a better job with that, right? So let's say it's like 90% accurate, but 10% of the time it gets it wrong. And you're like, oh, okay, that's really cute and adorable, but it's no big deal if it gets it wrong. You just sort of laugh at it. Maybe sometimes you get a little bit frustrated if you're like, I'm in a rush, I want this thing to actually listen to what I'm saying and do it. But really, even if it gets things wrong a tenth of the time, 10% of the time, it's doing amazingly well and it's understanding what you're asking it most of the time. And of course, that's really increased. I remember the early days of like Siri and it was pretty atrocious at it back in, was it 2012 or 2014 when it was introduced? Anyway, you know, so let's say eight or 10 years, it has improved drastically over that period of time. So some of you may already be realizing exactly where I'm going with this. Where I'm going with this is 
90% is fantastic for Alexa. It's fantastic for research projects. It's even fantastic for Google search, right? If you Google search something and you get the results you want in the top 10, you're pretty happy with that because you can kind of, you know, scroll through and you're like, oh, it's actually number five was the one I was really looking for. And after the advertisements and the three mistakes that it made, that's the one I actually wanted. For most purposes, whether it's research or commercial purposes, getting somewhere in the 90% accuracy range is really darn good. But full self-driving is a whole different can of worms. If you get full self-driving right nine tenths of the time, 90% of the time, you're gonna kill somebody or injure them or wreck the person's car or do something absolutely horrible. And that is the serious, serious rub about full self-driving or autonomous driving, whether it's Tesla or Comma.ai or Wave or Waymo or Cruise or whoever it is. The consequences of not getting it right are drastic. And that is a significantly different problem, right? So for whether it's research or commercial or whatever, you can put out software that does a 90% accurate job and it can function in the real world and it can keep learning and it can keep improving. The problem with full self-driving is literally the consequences of it. You cannot have 90% accurate. You can't have 99% accurate driving. You can't really have 99.9% .9 accurate driving. It's got to start chasing those decimal points. You need to probably be on the order of 99.99% accurate in your driving before full self-driving can really take over from human driving and functionally work as well as or better than the average driver. And when I put it like this, you're probably like, well, yeah, that's pretty obvious. But the problem is that almost all research and most commercial products these days, especially ones that are tied up with AI, are all about, look, we've got like better than chance, right? It's above 50%. We're at 75% or 80% or 90% or even 95%. And those are amazing results and they're fantastic for the purposes that people are using them for. And they would also be fantastic for full self-driving, right? You know, if you look at what the state of the art was 15 years ago or something, and you're like, the thing was driving and just, it would go five miles an hour and run into things and if a person walked out in front of it it would just collide with them at five miles an hour fortunately so it wouldn't hurt them you know so you look at like these older models of full self-driving they were pathetic they they did better than random chance but they were certainly far worse than an average human driver and that was okay under these model circumstances where you had them you know in a little sandbox where they could drive around but to put this stuff in the real world the expectations are incredibly incredibly high for what full self-driving has to be able to do to functionally work without endangering the public or the person driving the car and i'm looking back at things i i'm gonna contend that i think this is why people including elon musk and others keep underestimating the timeline they keep saying oh it's gonna happen next year or it's going to happen within three years or it's going to happen by this certain date. I think the problem is that everyone is sort of conditioned by a less consequential AI training sort of thing or just coding in general, right? In general, if coding works 90% of the time, or even for, you know, fairly function critical things, if it's working like 95, 98% of the time, that's pretty adequate. The only sort of decent parallel to all of this is like space flight or something. You, you have to have something work almost 100% of the time, right? And, and even when you look at those computer systems that they have, you have triple redundant computer systems in the space shuttle, they all vote on things, and there were still two horribly tragic accidents that happened because they were unable to get up to the level of 99.99 something percent safe. So really, I think spaceflight is the only really decent parallel, and spaceflight, of course, doesn't use AI for the kind of stuff that we're talking about here. This is all just pre-programmed things. So you've got the weirdness of neural networks, which are very, very difficult to understand. They're very strange little beasties. They do their own thing. Remember, you've got billions of little tuning knobs you're moving around, and every single one of those that changes a little bit, you have no particular idea what every single one of those things does. So it can create situations where you don't quite know what's happening, and so what you might do is get to a certain level and you're like, oh, this is working great. In fact, Elon Musk was talking about this in an interview with Lex Friedman, I think recently, where what he was saying was that you've got the, the video cameras that the, the cars are producing, right? And you think from those video cameras that 
pre-processing the images so that they look good to a human being and adding in the latency that comes with that is all acceptable. But then you hit this wall, you hit, well, ceiling, I guess, actually, you're bumping into this thing. And you're like, oh crap, we can't do that. What we have to do is throw away the pre-processing. Don't make it look good to people count the photons instead. You reduce 13 milliseconds of latency, and that is huge, and also you're getting more of a raw photon count. But all of these things, you're tying up a whole bunch of different pieces into a neural network, which is a very, very mysterious thing, and the expectation, the kind of like general human sort of thinking about all of this stuff is like, yeah, if it's right 90 or 95% of the time, it's gonna achieve that next chunk relatively easily. But when you look at most AI research, people hit a wall, right? They'll get to a certain point and they're like, oh, wow, this is amazing, it's 90% accurate. You don't hear them the next week going like, hey, I've got 99.9% .9 accuracy. So usually what happens is, in research projects or in commercial projects, again, Alexa, I'm sure if you have one or Siri or hey Google or whatever it is you wanna pick out, it doesn't do 100% perfect and the expectation is never that it's going to. It increased very, very rapidly. It got much, much better over a period of time and now it's really leveled off and it's not improving drastically over time anymore. So the problem is we get onto these linear slopes, there's an expectation that's going to continue going like this. If we get to 90% accuracy, it's like, great, we're gonna to get to 100%. No problem, we're gonna get there really, really soon. Well, that is not the case at all. And that's sort of what I wanted to really pull out and examine here. And so what happens is we human beings, for whatever reason, when we see something on a linear slope, we're just really good at linear things. We're not very good at exponential things or logarithmic things. And what happens is you get this curve that's on a linear path, but then it logs off. <laughs> so it goes like this, it flattens. And we're not real good at predicting that kind of thing instead. Exponentials, whether it's exponential or logarithmic, which is the opposite of each other, we're not really good at predicting that, th that kind of thing. We're good at predicting the linear part. And so we see the linear, we're like, wow, we're, we're at 75%, we'll be at 90% in a month, we'll be at 100% in a year, no problem at all. But that's not what happens. It goes like this and then it levels off and we never get above some certain percentage. And then you have to like cast back again and go like, okay, now what do we do? We, you know, <laughs> jumble things up, try again, see what happens. And we maybe get a little bit higher next time. We maybe get a little bit higher next time. So I think again, that eventually we are going to get to full self-driving that is going to be demonstrably better than human beings in almost all circumstances where normal humans drive. But the problem is that we're just really, really bad. We're ill-equipped to predict when that's going to happen. Because number one, it's terribly complex. There's a lot of different moving parts. And number two, we're really, really bad at predicting that logarithmic drop-off in improvement. And so there's this tendency for us to be optimistic. Now, I will hold myself fully accountable. I'm still saying that we're gonna reach full self-driving, which will be better than the average human by the end of 2022, but I could be very well off. We're down to only eight months left in the year before we get to that point. So I could find myself in eight and a half months, you know, going mea culpa, I made a bad mistake. We're not even close to that at this point. So, you know, <laughs> I find myself completely in that camp of going like, wow, we're improving so fast. We're on this linear trend. Things are going to go straight to 100%. No big deal. We'll get there really, really fast. That's not the way this kind of improvement works. And I have to also rein myself in sometimes. So part of this video is me saying like, hey, John, <laughs> rein yourself in. Perhaps you're being a little bit too optimistic too. So anyway, I'm going to hold on to my prediction because I said I was going to hold on to it. So we will see how it goes. Hopefully this week we will be seeing full self-driving version 11, which is the single stack to rule them all. If that happens, that is going to be a major data point in terms of how fast we're approaching that better than human driver full self-driving capability. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, I hope that this is a useful video and I hope it causes you to think a little bit about this and say like, yeah, we are, you know, we tend to have a feeling that if we get from 50% to 70%, in a certain amount of time that we'll get from 70% to 90% in that same amount of time and 90% to 100% in, you know, maybe double that amount of time, right? So you kind of project this all out linearly for the most part, but we're just really, really bad at that. Anyway, if you did enjoy this episode, please do like it so that AI on YouTube actually will help other people to find this video. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. The Angry Astronaut has a 100,000 subscriber contest going on. 
I actually have a 100,000 subscriber contest going on too. In my mind, I haven't announced it yet because I'm still far, far away. But let's put an easier goal in mind. Let's go to 50,000. I'm going to announce something interesting to do when I get to 50,000 subscribers. So definitely subscribe to the channel so we can make that happen very quickly. Thank you. And speaking of thank you, thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. You all are amazing. It's been an amazingly busy couple of weeks, but I have been really enjoying the conversations that we've been having on Discord. And as soon as this semester quiets down and I get my papers presented and all of that kind of stuff, I will be devoting some more time and hopefully doing some exclusive content for my Patreon patrons. So definitely join the team if you are interested. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, Success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.